All right, this video is going to be kind of long. It is, again, for the final review, and this is going to go over the periodic table, bonding, acids, bases, and salts. So it's going to be long, but there's a lot of information. So the periodic table. This is the basic shape of the periodic table. The periodic table organizes all of the elements in a couple different ways. Most importantly, by increasing atomic number as it goes across. And for the most part, it's also organized in um, order of increasing atomic mass. There are a couple exceptions in there. So the most important number to check is the increasing atomic number. It also organizes it by an increasing number of energy levels as you go down the periodic table. So with that, and with those different organization types, there's a lot of different numbers placed around the periodic table. The first and foremost important ones are going to be the group numbers, and that's across the top of the periodic table. Now, in the A groups, group 1A through 8A, those A groups are going to tell you how many valence electrons the elements in those groups have, that column has. Okay, Elements in columns like that will have a similar property. There are also numbers on the side. That's the period number, and that tells you the number of energy levels, where those valence electrons are located. There's also two big sections we don't get into too much detail about, the transition metals and the inner transition metals. So what's the point of the periodic table? Why did we decide we needed to organize these elements anyways? Most important, it helps us predict properties of new elements, and it tells us a lot about which elements like to bond together. So bonding, as you guys know, um, is when the two elements or more join together to form a compound. So this is how compounds are created and how we know which compounds can and cannot be created. Um, so for example, there's this thing called the rule of eight, which says that for the most part, and there's two exceptions, hydrogen and helium, because they only have two electrons in their outer energy level, but for the most part, Elements want eight electrons in their outer energy level. They want to have eight valence electrons because eight is full for them. That's why they call it the rule of eight. So for example, we can say that most elements in group 2A would bond with any one element from group 6A because two plus six equals eight. That's what the rule of eight says. Now of these bonds, there are two major types where the elements that are in that bond share the electrons, and that's a covalent bond. The, one of the most famous covalent bonds out there is water, H2O. In this case, it's two hydrogen atoms and an oxygen atom, and they're all sharing the electrons. The electrons aren't just on one oxygen or just on one hydrogen, or even just on two, um, you know, one oxygen, one hydrogen, and leaving the other one out. The, ele the electrons go around all of them. So they're, because they're sharing them, they're stuck together, and they're a covalent bond. The other type is when the elect, el sorry, wow, when the elements in the bond actually gain or give up electrons. This is called an ionic bond. When they do that, they become charged. For example, if I have four negatives and four positives, I'm now currently evenly charged. But if I give up a negative, now I have more positives than negatives. I've become positively charged. That's what happens in ionic bonds. Or if I had four negatives, four positives, but I gain a negative, now I'm negatively charged. So that's how those elements get those charges. Once they have those charges, opposites attract. So if you have a positively charged and a negatively charged, they're gonna stick together. They're gonna be like buddies. For example, NaCl, sodium, salt, um, sorry, sodium chloride, salt. The sodium gives up one electron, so it got rid of a negative charge, now it has a positive charge, and it gave it to the chlorine, who now has an extra negative, so it has a negative charge. A charge of positive one and negative one are going to stick together, opposites attract, so that's how they form that ionic bond. With these bonds, they form three types of special compounds. Not all compounds fit under any of these three categories, but these are three special types you need to be made aware of. The first one is an acid. An acid is something as any element, oh, wow, a chemical that has a P 
pH of below 7. So the pH scale is over here. I'm going to divert your attention over here for just a second. So the pH scale um, ranges at 7, which is neutral. Pure distilled water has a pH of 7, which is neutral. It does, it's not an acid or a base. Okay? As you go down the pH scale, you get closer and closer to 0. You're in the acids. Now, each number, it might seem like, oh, it only goes up to through 14. That must not be a very big difference. Between each of these numbers, the acid, the difference in the acidity, or the difference in the basis, the basicness, um, is 10 times. So, so for example, the difference between 7 and 6 is 10 times. So an acid with a pH of 6 is 10 times more acidic than a pH of 7. An acid with a pH of 5 is going to be 10 times 10, so 100 times more acidic than something with a pH of 7. So you see how it can get really, really strong by the time you get down here to these lower ones. All right, so like I said, acid is anything below 7 on the pH scale. You're going to taste them. They taste sour. And they have the lower the pH you have, the stronger the acid. We just went over that because remember, each number you go down, it gets 10 times stronger. So bases are on the opposite end of the pH scale. As you go above 7, you're now a base. You're getting more and more basic. And the same happens. The difference between 7 and 8, it's 10 times more basic. The difference between 7 and 9 is going to be 100 times more basic. 7 and 10, 1,000 times more basic. Um, so you can see that for each one, you add an extra 10 times. So again, it's above 7 on the pH scale. They'll feel slippery to the touch. A lot of soaps and cleaners are bases. And they have a higher pH, at the, sorry, the higher the pH, the stronger the base. We just went over that. If you mix an acid and a base together, you get two things. You end up with water and a salt. So that's what a salt is. It's a byproduct of mixing an, mixing an acid and a base together. And those are some compounds that is bonding, and that was the periodic table.